Chapter 11, Culture. The Chapter 11 objectives are explain how culture and environment interact and affect a patient's health status. Define culture and describe basic characteristics. Discuss the role of cultural competence in the nursing assessment. Describe how assessment interview needs should be modified with cultural variations. Recognize your own tendencies to stereotype and your own ethnocentrism. Recognize your own levels of cultural competence. Describe parts of the cultural assessments and discuss a cultural assessment on a person of a different culture. Last, you're gonna perform a self-reflection of your own experiences in the cultural and spiritual self-assessment assignment. So what does culture have to do with nursing? We know we take care of many diverse populations and cultural groups, and we know that culture affects different health-related definitions, how somebody treats their own disease process, what could be their outcomes and practices. Do we understand how culture affects influences or barriers to healthcare? How it affects communication and behaviors under our care? Do you know some of the cultural variations that might be seen in assessment findings? Maybe how something appears or how somebody has been treating um, their own uh, disease process at home may be different than what you're used to. And do you under, uh, know that understanding differences can affect the patient's care? If you're a patient and your caregiver is respectful and um, understanding with what your needs or traditions are, that can mean a lot to your patients. So providing culturally congruent practice is something that is an American Nurse Association standard, and we know all patients deserve the high quality care that we can provide. So some of the terms that might be related to culture that you would want to be familiar with. The first one is acculturation, which is, means giving up traits of a culture as a result of context with another culture. Assimilation is the gradual adoption and incorporation of the prevailing culture. Cultural diversity is a coexistence of a difference in behavior, traditions, and customs or diversity of culture. Culture imposition is an intrusive application of the majority group's cultural view. Cultural relativism is a belief that the behaviors and practices of people should be judged only from the context of their cultural system. And then culture itself is the totality of socially transmitted behavior patterns, beliefs, values, customs, that guide um, the population's worldview and decision-making. Enculturation is a natural, conscious or unconscious process of learning accepted cultural norms. The ethnicity is a socially, culturally, and politically constructed group that holds in a common set of characteristics not shared by others. Now, there are some times when you may hear about a race or ethnicity as part of a risk factor. But if you think about it, this is a social construct. A group is a social construct and not necessarily has any genetic impact on disease processes whatsoever. Ethnocentrism is a universal tendency of humans to think their way of thinking and believing are the only right way. Stereotyping is an oversimplified opinion or belief about an aspect of a group. A subculture are people with, um, people with a culture that differentiates from the larger culture. So you may have the big culture of nursing, but nursing students are a subculture of the nursing as a whole. So a worldview is the way individuals or groups look at the universe to make basic assumptions and values about their lives. So part of the cultural assessments 
is um, your initial assessment and the ongoing. Now, when you meet a patient the first time, the very first thing you ask them may not be about their culture, um, but you will follow their lead um, about what is important to them while they are under your care in the hospital setting, of course. So we are going to assess your patient. Um, we, you might ask them about anything that's important to them that you make sure you include in their care um, while they are with you. Um, we know that their values, their lear our learned beliefs, and are perceived to be appropriate or inappropriate. And sometimes patients are hesitant to share things with you unless they're comfortable and trusting and don't think they're going to be judged. Um, uh, so this is a, um, a, a relationship that has to be built. Um, as we talked about before, race is not a physical characteristic. Um, it's a social construct. So um, we don't want to judge um, anything on race that is not a genetic um, issue that's a racial construct. So um, as you're thinking about those things um, in the hospital setting, that can be important because those are changing thought processes um, as we go along in healthcare. Racial categories, there are still those that are um, utilized and um, um, we see those in the U.S. Census or we see them in some insurance paperwork. Um, uh, so there, there are still those classifications um, that you might see. Now, uh, a description of a minority is uh, an implication in society that a group might have less power or it's a smaller population, but those things are also changing. So we look at a lot of these words in cultural assessment and we take some of those with a grain of salt that these concepts are changing um, in, uh, in healthcare. So we want to assess uh, culture in the healthcare setting because we are bonding with your patient about their beliefs and behaviors, what they know about their health and illness, and how they're taking care of things, what their, their goals are, what their expected treatments might be. And if there are any religious beliefs that conflict with um, Western care or treatment, we want to address those and try to um, be respectful of your patient's needs there. Sometimes they do um, conflict and contrast, um, but we are respectful to the patient and for whatever their needs are. Um, we can look at other um, patients that may be um, similar, but you never want to assume that just because a patient is a part of a culture that they practice the same thing as everyone else in that culture. Um, and we don't want to stereotype those type of things. You're going to talk to your patient and ask your patient because um, they are an individual. So the client's health um, relative to diseases um, may be um, similar, maybe not. We just have to talk to your patient and assess each individual. So some of the beliefs and values that might assess is um, what their um, uh, values are for, for their health care, for, um, uh, for life, for healing, for health and illness. Um, about their expectations for their health, what is the role of the nurse, um, and any uh, barriers, concerns, or beliefs about um, pain and um, how, how we can help them. Obviously, these are heavy topics, and um, so this is not something you're going to jump off the bat when you first meet the patient, but as you get to know them, you can be open um, to asking what they need from you, how you can help them. Um, we are having these conversations because you're treating a whole person that has their physical 
emotional, um, spiritual, all those types of needs rolled up into one. So things that can affect the clients and healthcare providers is if um, uh, ethnicities are different, maybe there's some bias or lack of understanding. If there is a generational um, status issues as a, a younger or older patient, sometimes that there are some barriers there as well um, to, uh, to understanding and being open to understand. Um, language um, interpretation and translation, um, we have heard that before. Lost in translation um, can be a, a real problem. Um, sometimes with whatever a patient's expectations are, some treatments are not available um, in your hospital setting. So this might be um, a, a concern or a discussion. Maybe your patients had either positive or negative previous experience with healthcare providers. And so they bring that to the discussion um, and we just have to work with your patient wherever they are. Um, maybe your patient, um, their belief about um, boundaries, personal space. Um, some patients do not like to be touched. Some patients do not want eye contact. And so whatever your patient needs, we want to be respectful um, to, to those cultural things. And um, sometimes it's just good to ask what your patient is comfortable with. So their communication needs, their preferences, uh, I feel like it's a valid question to ask and very respectful. Um, if your patient is okay when you are doing specific things, asking for permission, et cetera. So other cultural affects on care is maybe what they eat, their nutrition, um, maybe how they want to take medication. Some patients don't want to take any medications, uh, blood transfusions, and even rituals in birth and death um, really depends on the patient's customs. But we're going to talk to your patients and, and have them be involved in these type of decisions. Now, there are some things that we know um, that are challenging that we have to deal with. For example, if your patient is diabetic and the family wants to bring a big bowl of rice, we know that that is not going to help um, them with their diabetes. So we may have to have some discussions, but we want to absolutely involve the patient in their care. So in summary, how does the culture and environment affect the patient's health care status? Can you discuss the role of cultural competence? Do you realize this is a crucial thing for your patient in building that trusting relationship? Do you recognize any of your own tendencies to bias, to stereotype? Um, and uh, your own cultural competence. Um, can you discuss the different parts of the cultural assessment? And um, how would you perform a self-reflection of your cultural and spiritual experiences?